Bokrima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Satna to discuss his column titled Playing a Revolutionary or Emancipatory Role in South Africa Part 6. So, Professor, you speak of the ANC's democratic and popular character and debates being abandoned. Is it not uh, exaggerated? And if not, was this an intentional decision or was it not perhaps a, an unintentional fallout from process of becoming a government? Well, I was involved uh, from the time of unbanning in the ANC and I'd come from the UDF. And when the ANC was unbanned, uh, we couldn't just pick up from 1960. You know, they've been 30 years. And the question was, what type of ANC did we want to build? And I was involved in political education. And we thought when we were inducting new members and things like this, that we would train them to be able to be active in the organization and in the communities, not just by voting for the ANC when the elections came four years later, we didn't know when it would be, but by having briefings and debates and things like that. Now, in the years that followed, uh, when negotiations started, you could already see that the role of the membership became more passive. They got these report backs and it was very hard for people to understand uh, because it was technical what was negotiated. But secondly, in some areas, especially the urban areas, but also in some uh, rural areas, there had to be translations into more than one African language. And in the cities, also in English, maybe in Afrikaans in some places. So that from the time of negotiations, a lot of people didn't really know what was going on in their own organization because it was very specialized. And when the ANC became government, they were expected and we were all willing to get involved in making sure that people voted for the ANC. After that, some branches continued to have debates and things like that, but in the main the job of members was to observe what their leaders were doing and to not have an active role themselves. As in the 1980s, there were street committees who had managed things in their affairs, even if they were councillors. Now, when I was involved in political education, we thought there was still room for that local level involvement of people in keeping their villages and their uh, townships clean and things like this, try to make recreational facilities. It's the job of government, but it's also something that people want to do because they want to have a, a sense of home where the kids can play safely. So I think on the one hand, it did become uh, depoliticized, less popular, and I think there may have been an intention because, as I said in one of my articles, people were coming to ANC headquarters from business management schools and telling us how we must change the ANC. Now, there was no formal decision for this, but there was a lot of talk about modernize the ANC, uh, make it um, normalize it. In other words, I understood, make it like a Western political party, which is just an electoral machine, doesn't have a living existence. Now, Professor, do you not concede that something had to be done about the organizational form of, of liberation movement in the period of democratic rule and governance? Uh, you surely concede that uh, the ANC's liberation movement character did not adequately cater for the situation which had changed so profoundly. Yes, you know, I, I think that people like myself were involved, we were told to get involved in an insurrection, and we were trying to overthrow the, the regime right up until 1990. Although you know, we were arrested or in house arrest, and all this, we were still doing our little bit to overthrow the government, and we were not paying attention 
to what it entailed to govern. And to govern is not the same as being a liberation movement. So the question really isn't whether you have one or the other, but what is the relationship between a popular organization, which I think is very important to keep, and making a government that is able to conduct the processes of the civil service and things like this, professionalization. And some of the things that were done by the apartheid regime, you had to keep the format, but the objectives would be different. You were, Or maybe you couldn't keep the format if when the, the objectives were different, but we had to manage a civil service, a public service, which was responsible to the whole population. And the liberation movement has not been trained to do that. So it was necessary to do that, but not necessarily to abandon the liberation movement, uh, popular character and debating. And lastly, is it not inevitable and unavoidable that uh, the liberation movement's importance will be diminished once it becomes uh, the government of the day or do you believe that maybe there can be a core government between uh, the government and the liberation movement? You know, President Mandela used to, I don't know if he said it publicly, but he used to often say, leaders have to lead. And he meant, we can't keep on going back to you people <laughs> and checking whether every step we take is correct. And I think there is something true about that. But there's something that is half true about it in the sense that you do, if you come from, if your mandate comes from a liberation movement, you can't go and govern and then come back to them in five years time and ask for their vote. You have to do more than report. You come from them. Those are the people from whom most of the cadres and activists came. So you can't just say goodbye to them. We have to govern. Uh, so that is it is correct that leaders have to lead, and when they come to labor matters, it can't be uh, the cabinet and Kosatu uh, sitting together and deciding what to do. Government has to put things in a form that is different. When you make legislation, you have a green paper, sometimes a white paper, and all these things, and it has to be made into legislation, and the branches can't do that. So that's why it's a, it's partly correct that there in, it was something inevitable in the change, but not as not a rupture that there was with the people. There was political analyst Professor Raymond Satna in conversation with Polity, discussing his column titled "Playing a Revolutionary or Emancipatory Role in South Africa Part 6.